we take you on a journey from the Rio Grande Valley to San Diego, California, and speak with local law enforcement, nonprofit organizations, and even people living along the border. Uno viene buscando oportunidades. Me crucé el río. For some residents living on the U.S. side of the border fence, watching people crossing over illegally is nothing new. Was a clip from our coverage along the border in our series, The Line. Case at Trails, Swift, Tiffany Huertas, digital journalist Adrian Garcia, and video journalist Jennifer Galvan traveled from the Rio Grande Valley west to San Diego to share stories of what life is really like along the U.S. Mexico border. As you can see, they're all joining us now to share some of their experiences. Two things, first of all, thanks for being here, and thank you for the stories you did. They were so eye opening and educational. Can you each tell me real quick, did you have one specific thing that stuck out that you weren't expecting to find? I think after several years for myself covering the border, I was a reporter in the Rio Grande Valley. Mm -hmm. and. I think the impact uh, that it's affected the zero tolerance policy and several years the effects of the border policies here in the U.S. along the U.S.-Mexico border, I see that people are living in fear. And with that being said, it, it's like a trickle effect, right? So it goes down to the communities, to law enforcement, then putting more emphasis on pursuits, on border apprehensions. We see all types of different effects of the border policies that have been implemented for several years, but simply we realize that many of them need a lot of work. It's a very complex issue, but some of them are not working. What about you as a photojournalist, Jen? Um, just actually for me, it was, it was very weird because I'm from the valley. Mm -hmm. I'm from a border town. So just going back and seeing that, um, like Tiffany said, just people being in fear. Like, so growing up there, you didn't see that. Growing it wasn't up, you see that, but you don't really pay attention to it. You just go on, you know, live your day, live your life. Does it look then, different through the lens of a camera? It does, it does, okay. it looks very different. Until I started doing news is when you start seeing the pursuits, the arrests, um, so many things. And then people we bumped into that we um, didn't, you know, plan on talking to were terrified. They were just terrified, like, yeah. So, Adrian, what about you? Were you surprised at anything that you found? Yeah, I'm in the same boat with Janet. Uh, my family, my dad's side of the family lives in uh, the valley, Rio Grande Valley. And uh, one of the things that stuck out to me the most was uh, Nogales, Arizona. So how close those communities were together. I mean, these are homes that are facing each other. And the only thing splitting them apart is just the border fence. I mean, you can literally throw a stone over the fence and you'd hit the window of that other house on Mexico side. That's amazing. Yeah, and with that being said, also, um, that's not what you see here in the Rio Grande Valley. So for people that haven't been to the Rio Grande Valley border, the border fence, you cannot touch it from the Mexico side, but that's very different once you past the Rio Grande Valley, once you get to, you know, Nogales and San Diego, California, there's people that are communicating on the wall, on the border fence from both sides of each country. Isn't it called like the friendship? No, that's thing? different. So at the end of our journey, so we traveled from Brownsville, Texas, all the way to San Diego, California. And in San Diego, California, there is the border fence that goes into the water. But right in that same park, there's a mini little section that is divided, right? It has two fences. So once you pass one border patrol fence you go to the next one and you get to be in this little um i guess like it's a, a park it's like it a little, little mini park, park and you get to communicate with people on the other we're side. showing it right now right yes. here right yeah that's yes. it so this is like several people like this this family they were going to talk to someone that they haven't spoken to for several years. And we see a watchtower there in the background, I guess, right? Mm -hmm. There's, there's watchtowers everywhere. Oh, there, okay. And it's very time limited and constrained. So we're talking about only about four hours mm -hmm. on two days, right? Saturday, on Saturday, and Saturday and Sunday. And Sunday. Mm -hmm. So they're allowed to meet at the fence and communicate. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and it's that 2 p.m. mark is, that's it. it yeah. The doors close, the gates close. And it's not like, oh, you know, you're with your family. When you go visit your family, you can hug them, touch them, speak to them, and, you know, just, and here it's through a fence where you can barely put your finger. Like, you can't even put your finger through the fence. Yeah, it's pretty tight grid. 
Adrian, from a digital point of view, what were some of the stories you were able to tell that we didn't see necessarily on air but were online? Uh, just kind of the things that we were just covering every day. Um, and these, these are stories that were, um, you know, that were being shown on air. But uh, as we were going on our board, board journey, we were telling the stories digitally, uh, on, online, on social media. Uh, we were just every, every chance that every town that we were stopping at along our journey, we just kind of gave viewers their perspective. And people were very open about all of this, right? You didn't have any issues finding someone to talk to you about their perspective. No, but with that being said, in Arizona, that's why Adrian's shaking his head, because in Arizona, there was one woman that she says, why do you want to interview me? And she says, several reporters have been here before, have done this story. She's like, it's, there's nothing new. People are crossing over. I see it every day. And I'm like, whoa. You know, that goes to show you that this is reality and this is life for some people living on the border mm -hmm. and nothing has really changed even though we see it in a different perspective because we don't live there. You know, and that's the whole point that we wanted to capture. We wanted to see what people there living right there in Nogales, what they were seeing and what they were experiencing. And some people chose to turn away and chose not to, like, report these things. Well, like we're showing pictures of the tunnels and stuff that you see how some people get through and all of this can be found online. If you didn't get a chance to see all their stories, we really encourage you to go to ksat.com and see all of the stories. Beautiful work. Tiffany, really Jen, Adrian, thanks for coming in. We